The day my childhood sweetheart got engaged to someone else, I was in a plane crash. The one who came to collect my body was Julian, whom I once cursed and despised. He abandoned everything to commit suicide and accompany me to the netherworld. Starting anew, I knocked on Julian's door in a downpour. In his astonished eyes, I grabbed his sleeve. Julian, will you marry me? The man suddenly blushed, but indifferently shook off my hand. Is messing with me fun? That night, I shivered in the rain. Julian angrily opened the door and sighed as he pulled me into his arms. Maeve, I'm nothing more than a damn dog you've raised. Chapter 1 When I opened my eyes again, I was awakened by a chill. I got up and closed the window. The weather had just turned autumn, and I returned to before my childhood friend Lucas got engaged. My phone rang several times, messages from Lucas. Maeve, I'm having dinner with Lillian tonight, why don't you come over? I know you're not comfortable, but I've decided to marry her. We'll have to meet in the future, I don't want the two most important people in my life to have such a strained relationship. Do me a favor, let's have dinner together tonight. Looking at the messages popping up on my phone, I sneered. In my previous life, I was devoted to Lucas. He promised me that we would get married after graduation. I never worried that Lucas would break his promise. Because I knew, with our childhood friendship, he would marry me someday. But later, a girl named Lillian appeared in Lucas's life. She always liked to tease Lucas, often making him blush. She would kiss his cheek when he was angry and say. You're so cute. I watched helplessly as Lucas fell. He said that after Lillian appeared, he finally understood what love felt like. He said she was his light, his salvation. He also said that in this lifetime, besides Lillian, he would not marry anyone else. He forgot all the promises he made to me, cruelly and decisively making me face reality. In my previous life, on the day he got engaged to Lillian, I was on a business trip in Los Angeles. Hearing the news, my heart turned to ashes. I immediately cancelled all my work and bought a ticket back home. Perhaps it was destined that I couldn't stop their union. That day, the plane I was on crashed. At the moment when the cabin was plummeting rapidly, my heart was filled with regret. I felt like I shouldn't die just like that. What's even more unwilling is that I lost my life in vain for a man who didn't care about me. Chapter 2 After my death, my soul kept wandering around the crash site. The media reported the incident immediately. And the only person who came to collect my body was the one I once despised the most, Julian. With red eyes, he rushed to the scene. Allowing his hands to dig into the ground until they were bloody, but he never stopped. Julian kept calling my name. The overwhelming grief made him black out and faint. Later, he committed suicide by taking pills in his own villa. When he was found, it was already too late for any rescue. And in the letter left in the study, there was only one sentence. Maeve, don't be afraid, I'm here to accompany you. Perhaps Julian's obsession was too deep, so I came back to life again. Feeling the fresh breath, I felt as if I had been away for a long time. This time, I decided to cherish Julian. The man who was once willing to give up his life for me. He loved me so much, it was me who was blind and let him down in my past life. Thinking of this, I opened the chat on my phone. I replied to Lucas with a short message. I have no objections to whoever you marry, but let's not contact each other in the future. After sending these, I decisively turned off my phone. The sky outside the window had already darkened. At this time, Julian should have finished work. When I was changing clothes to go out, the TV was broadcasting the weather news. Starting from 6.30 p.m. tonight, there will be heavy rain in the city. Citizens are advised to carry umbrellas when going out. I didn't pay attention and casually turned off the TV. When I got out of the taxi, there was a light drizzle in the sky. Relying on memory, I searched for Julian's address in the villa area. In my previous life, I only heard him mention it once. When I arrived at the door, I nervously swallowed a sip of saliva. Then, I raised my hand and pressed the doorbell. 
Even when I heard about Lucas and Lillian's engagement in my previous life, my heart didn't beat as fast as it did now. After so many years of separation, I was once again looking for Julian. The doorbell rang several times before I heard footsteps from inside. Opening the door, Julian and I faced each other. He was wearing a gray home outfit, and his dark messy hair made him look somewhat gentle. Seeing me at the door, his eyes widened. Maeve? Under his gaze, I gradually blushed. The sky was already pouring heavy rain, hitting the steps beneath my feet. I took a deep breath and, in Julian's surprised eyes, grabbed his sleeve. Julian, would you marry me? Chapter 3 The air suddenly quieted down. Julian's eyes turned red. He stared at me intently, as if trying to read something from my face. After a while, Julian finally chuckled self-deprecatingly. Maeve, are you playing with me? He turned to leave, but I held on to him once again. Feeling Julian's indifferent gaze, I felt incredibly uncomfortable. Being ignored by someone felt like this. In the past, I treated him like that. I used to call Julian a nuisance. I once hysterically cried in front of him, begging him not to appear in my life anymore. Back then, Julian must have felt terrible as well. But there I was, heartbroken over Lucas, solely focused on another man. I was despicable. With these thoughts in mind, my gaze became more determined. Julian, I know you don't believe me now. But about marriage, I am sincere. I want to be with you. Julian's eyes deepened, and he lowered his gaze. As the door closed, I heard Julian's cold voice. It's raining. Go back early. And just like that, Julian shut me out. The heavy rain roared, defiantly hitting me. I struggled to move inside, getting half of my body soaked. The early autumn weather brought a chilling cold with the rain. I stood still, not taking a single step. With the door closed, Julian forced himself back to the study to continue working. He had been working for the past two days without rest. The project was in its final stage, and he needed to focus. But the woman outside the door was making him restless, unable to concentrate. She came to him suddenly today, even mentioning marriage, which really caught him off guard. In the past, such words would never have come out of Maeve's mouth. Julian once thought he was lovesick, hallucinating. But seeing her determined gaze, Julian couldn't help but be moved. He steeled himself, forcing himself not to care about her. Ten minutes passed. The monitor on the computer showed that she hadn't left yet. Clearly shivering from the cold, she stubbornly waited for him to come out. She was incredibly persistent. Julian shook his head helplessly, ultimately softening his heart. He went to the bathroom to grab a clean, large towel, walking quickly towards the entrance. And there I stood at the door, shivering uncontrollably. Just when I thought Julian wouldn't acknowledge me again, the door opened. A clean towel quickly blocked my view. Then, I felt myself being pulled into a warm embrace. Julian's hoarse voice sounded in my ear. Maeve, I'm nothing more than a damn dog you've raised. Even though I decided not to like you anymore, I can't control my heart. My heart trembled fiercely, and I opened my mouth to say something. The next moment, the man lifted me horizontally, keeping the rain curtain outside the door. Chapter 4 Julian placed me on the bathroom sink. His gaze was cold. Take a shower first. With that, he went to the bedroom and brought out a set of men's pajamas for me. This is new, never been worn before. Wash up and come out quickly. Watching him bustling around, I obediently nodded. Julian closed the bathroom door. I looked at the furnishings in the bathroom, clearly no woman had been here before. This realization made me inexplicably excited. After drying my hair and stepping out, Julian was sitting in the study looking through documents. Seeing me come out, he waved me over. Drink this. Julian handed me the cup of cold medicine he had prepared. The cup was still warm, and I drank it all in one go. Julian always had endless patience with me. Why couldn't I see his kindness before? Indeed, this was the first time I had seen Julian work so seriously. He was like a different person from the one I had in mind. 
I hesitated for a moment, thinking maybe I shouldn't disturb him. As I lifted my foot to walk into the living room, Julian called me back. Was what you just said serious? I turned around to find Julian looking at me too. His dark eyes revealed no emotion. It was serious. I replied. As the words left my mouth, his eyelashes trembled slightly. Sensing Julian's hesitation, my heart twinged. The next moment, I walked over to Julian. I took his hand in his bewildered gaze and said. Every word I said today was serious. Julian, I want to marry you. Can I? It was my first time proposing to a man, and I felt a strange nervousness in my heart. Even the way I looked at Julian was cautious. His peach blossom eyes lingered on me, as if afraid this was all a dream. Maeve, prove it to me. Prove that you are willing to marry me. How do you want me to prove it? As the words left my mouth, a lump formed in his throat. Kiss me. I didn't say a word, just silently gazed at Julian. Desire and a hint of fear flowed in his eyes. In his panic, afraid that this was just a whim, he said. Kiss me. Without thinking, I leaned in and kissed his lips. Just as I had expected. Julian's lips were soft and pleasant to kiss. Sensing my initiative, Julian seemed almost disbelieving. As I moved forward, he hesitantly took a step back. For every step he took back, I confidently pursued. Feeling my determination, Julian sighed lightly and took control. He pulled me onto his lap, and a storm of kisses ensued. Late into the night, emotions ran high. Julian carried me to the bedroom. His hoarse voice sounded especially sexy in the deep of the night. Maeve, you can still back out now if you want. I didn't say a word, only gently unbuttoned his shirt. Through my actions, I showed Julian that I had no regrets. His eyes exuded a strong possessiveness. Maeve, I will definitely die on you. Blushing, I buried myself in his arms. After a bit of turmoil, I finally fell into a deep sleep. Chapter 5 The next morning, Julian was already gone. I walked into the living room and saw a prepared breakfast on the table. There was a pink sticky note attached to it. Maeve, remember to eat your breakfast. I have an important meeting this morning, I'll be busy, but I'll come back to pick you up, and we'll go get our marriage license. Seeing the words, marriage license. I couldn't help but blush. Julian sure was efficient. He wasted no time and was straight to the point about getting married. Feeling joyful, I sat down and ate the fried eggs Julian made for me. Just the thought of him made me gently curve my lips. Since it was still early, I hailed a car directly back home. I had bought this house a few years ago. Though not large, it was a place I called home in the city. As I came downstairs with my documents, Julian was waiting for me in the car. Later, I'll call the moving company to move all your things to my place. He skillfully fastened my seatbelt, his tone leaving no room for doubt. Seeing me nod without objection, Julian chuckled softly. Suddenly leaning in, his peach blossom eyes fixed on me. Ready to be my wife? My heart skipped a beat. How did I not notice before that Julian enjoyed teasing people? I pursed my lips and without hesitation, kissed Julian on the lips. The man's smile froze suddenly, a suspicious blush appearing on his fair face. Julian cleared his throat a couple of times and returned to his seat. Beside him, my smile gradually widened. Julian, this innocent type, was simply too easy to play with. After completing a series of formalities, Julian seemed like he had found peace. He held my hand, calling me a wife tirelessly. And I kept responding to him over and over. Julian's eyes went from joy to a hint of redness. In that teary moment, he kissed my lips passionately. From now on, you are mine. Maeve, do you know how happy I am? I know. In those dark days, when there seemed to be no end, he always quietly watched over me. Watched me cry, watched me laugh, watched me chase after another man. Now, it's my turn to love him properly. Chapter 6 Late at night, after taking a shower, I turned on my phone. 
There were dozens of missed calls, all from Lucas. The latest message had just come in. Maeve, are you avoiding me? Tell me where you are right now. Rubbing my temples with a headache, I decided to tell him about the marriage. I heard footsteps behind me, and Julian swept me up in his arms. I gasped, accidentally dropping my phone on the bed. The man chuckled lightly, not paying it any mind. Wife, it's late at night. Time to sleep. The next moment, his lips came down on mine. Tonight, Julian seemed particularly eager. The words I wanted to say got lost in that kiss. In the midst of our embrace, the sharp ringtone of my phone echoed throughout the bedroom. Julian seemed unfazed, deepening the kiss. Feeling urgent, I wanted to answer the call. But Julian domineeringly held my chin, forcing me to accept him. Maeve, focus, all right? Yet the ringing persisted, a trend of not stopping until answered. After a while, Julian cursed under his breath. With a face full of dissatisfaction, he grabbed my phone from the foot of the bed. Seeing the name of Lucas, Julian's expression darkened. His tone was much colder now. It's for you. I glanced at Julian and decided to answer the call. The voice on the other end sounded even more urgent than I had imagined. Maeve, I know you're mad at me. Can you stop being mad, please? I haven't been able to reach you these past two days, and I'm really worried. Are you at home? Can I come see you now? I pursed my lips. No need, I'm not home right now. Lucas immediately responded. It's so late, if you're not home, where could you be? I'm with Julian. The air suddenly grew quiet. Lucas's voice, filled with disbelief, came through the receiver. How could you? Chapter 7 Before I could speak, I felt the surrounding air chill several degrees. With a slight raise of his eyebrow, Julian calmly said. Maeve, you didn't tell him we're married, did you? Looking at Julian's slightly disappointed eyes, my heart tightened. Subconsciously, I wanted to explain to Julian. No, I was just about to tell him. Unable to hear my response, Lucas kept calling my name on the phone. Julian's eyes darkened, and without hesitation, he kissed my slightly parted lips. Maeve, let me tell you. How should one deal with a rival in love? Originally very anxious, Lucas had imagined 10,000 reasons he couldn't accept. Why would Maeve be with Julian at this late hour? But when he heard the faint breathing on the other end of the line, Lucas felt as if lightning had struck him. They. In that moment, Lucas felt like his world was crumbling. He had thought that as long as he turned back, Maeve would always be there waiting for him. But now, she was in the arms of another man. She no longer loved him. This realization made Lucas tremble all over, his blood freezing in place. The next moment, he heard Julian's voice on the phone. Remember, don't disturb our married life late at night. Lucas, don't you have a wife of your own? With that, Julian decisively hung up the phone. Meanwhile, Lucas was still in a state of shock. Maeve and Julian, married. It couldn't be, this couldn't be real. Maeve used to hate Julian so much. She couldn't stand the sight of him. Why would she marry him now? The more Lucas thought about it, the more distressed and confused he became, eventually sweeping everything off the table in frustration. Inside the villa bedroom. After the commotion, Julian held me in his arms without saying a word. Feeling a wave of anxiety, I propped myself up and looked at him. Julian's eyes held emotions that I couldn't quite understand. Leaning in, I gently smoothed out the furrow in his brow. Julian, are you unhappy? His gaze shifted slightly, his hand around my waist tightening. Maeve, do you still like Lucas, do you? Chapter 8 at Julian's words, my eyes suddenly welled up with tears. No, I really don't like him anymore. I was just about to tell him that, but you interrupted. Julian, you're the one in my heart now. Julian looked at me. After a while, he finally smiled. All right, I understand. The more he acted this way, the more flustered I felt. I would have preferred if Julian scolded me or expressed his emotions to me. 
Unfortunately, he didn't. I moved closer and wrapped my arms around his neck. Honey, do you trust me? With gentle words, Julian couldn't resist this kind of affection. He held me tenderly. I trust you. Maeve, I care about you too much. Selfishly, I've always wanted you to be mine alone. With tears in his eyes, he tenderly kissed my hand. I knew, I knew it all. His fears, his vulnerabilities, all laid bare before me. All I could do was to make him feel secure. Our life after marriage with Julian was even happier than I had imagined. He never interacted with the opposite sex inappropriately, always maintaining boundaries. Even with just a small word from me, he would keep it in his heart. Friends would say, having a husband like him was like finding a treasure. So much so that. As I watched Julian busy in the kitchen wearing an apron, I suddenly felt a surreal sensation. Walking into the kitchen, I embraced Julian from behind. He paused in his vegetable cutting, then chuckled softly. You seem to be clinging to me a lot these past few days. With a smile playing on his lips, he said. That's a good thing. I tightened my grip on Julian's waist, feeling a bit pained. If this makes you happy, then I'll do more in the future. Julian's back stiffened for a moment before he turned around. His eyes darkened slightly, his peach blossom eyes gazing at me. Really, will you love me more and more? At that moment, Julian seemed like a cautious child, trying to please. I wrapped my arms around his neck, tiptoed, and planted a kiss on his forehead. I will. Julian, I will love you more and more. Julian's eyes darkened slightly, and a gentle kiss followed. A room filled with warmth. Chapter 9 On Friday night, Julian had a social engagement. I had planned to go home, take a bath, watch some dramas, and wait for Julian to return. Unexpectedly, I received an invitation to a high school classmate reunion as I was leaving work. This gathering was initiated by our high school class president. When I arrived at the restaurant, Lucas was standing at the door waiting for me. Seeing me approach, he looked pleased. I had no intention of acknowledging him and walked past him directly. Unexpectedly, Lucas eagerly grabbed my arm. Maeve, did you really marry Julian? Tell me, this is fake, right? You used to hate Julian the most in high school, how could you marry him? Lucas's words felt like an interrogation, yet also like a soliloquy. A forced smile hung on his face, waiting for my response. I shook my hand free, took a step back. Do you think I need to lie to you? Why? Because I love him. As I spoke, I saw Lucas's eyes well up with tears instantly. It's impossible, you can't possibly love him. You clearly said that once we graduated from college, we would get married. Maeve, look at me, the person you love is me, right? Lucas's eyes were filled with fury as he gripped my shoulder tightly. I winced in pain, furrowing my brows, and only then did Lucas release me as if awakening from a dream. Lucas, who was the first to break our promise? Do I need to say more? Hasn't the fact that you were going to marry Lillian ever happened? Or is it that you want both me and Lillian? I tell you, you better give up on this idea. Seeing my firm tone, he hesitated. I glanced at him, lifted my foot, and continued walking forward. But Lucas's voice came from behind. Lillian and I have broken up. I was confused before, which caused you pain. Maeve, I regret it now. Can you divorce Julian and get back together with me? I chuckled, not stopping my steps. On what grounds did Lucas think that as long as he turned around, I would always be waiting for him in the same place? All he's doing now is the ridiculous possessiveness taking over. When I loved him dearly, he took it for granted. So he could wholeheartedly love someone else. But when I turned around and married Julian, Lucas couldn't handle it. He couldn't stand someone intruding on his territory, taking away his things. In Lucas's eyes, I was just a dispensable object. But Julian is loving me with all his heart. He's fragile and sensitive. I will never hurt him again for Lucas. Chapter 10 The first time I saw Julian was in my sophomore year of high school. 
After school, I helped a teacher grade papers. Coming out of the teaching building, the sunset was just right. And on the basketball court, stood a boy covered in dirt. He looked as ragged as a stray dog, being scolded by his father. I paused my steps. Though far away, the middle-aged man's yelling was unbearable. The boy remained indifferent, not even lifting his eyelids. The next second, the middle-aged man's heavy slap landed on the boy's face. You brat, just because your mom's not around doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. If you cause trouble at school again, I won't spare you. With those words, the middle-aged man quickly disappeared from my sight. The boy crouched down, curling up where he stood. I said nothing, quickly walking towards the school gate. With each step, it felt like something was calling me from behind. I tightly gripped the shoulder strap of my bag, but eventually, I stopped in my tracks. I walked up to the boy and handed him a clean handkerchief. You have blood on your lips, are you okay? The Julian at that time, looked up at me for the first time. I paused for a moment. Those were very clean, clear eyes. He took the handkerchief and said thank you. Later, I found out that Julian's mother passed away when he was very young. During his teenage years, he was particularly rebellious, even refusing anyone to enter his world. Despite this, every time Julian was called by his parents. His father would still rush to the school in a hurry, bowing to the teacher in apology. Since then, I had an inescapable little tale behind me. Julian would always silently follow me, walking me home. He would also stand up for me when I was bullied, even getting into fights for me. During that time, everyone in the school was spreading rumors that Julian liked me. I finally couldn't take it anymore. One time, I stopped Julian in the dead of night. What exactly do you want, just say it. The Julian back then chuckled lightly, with a hint of bitterness in his smile. Maeve, I've only ever wanted you. And you, can you give that to me? That day, I harshly scolded Julian, calling him a pervert. I cried, begging him to stop following me, to stop appearing in my world. I said, Julian, you really disgust me. In that moment of eye contact, the light in Julian's eyes dimmed little by little. After that, I started avoiding him, trying to create opportunities to be with Lucas as much as possible. But Julian's presence was something even Lucas couldn't ignore. That's why he promised me that we would get married right after graduation. At that time, I looked at the Julian hidden in the shadows. Deliberately, loudly, I agreed to Lucas. And Julian, from then on, never appeared in front of me again. Chapter 11 Breaking away from the memories, I found myself standing at the door of the private room. As I pushed the door open, the scene inside was lively. Lucas and I entered one after the other, and everyone warmly greeted me. My former deskmate, Hazel, pulled me over to sit down. Everyone was chatting noisily, mostly just polite small talk. Maeve, you've really been too low-key these years, we never see you at our gatherings. Yeah, you should hang out with us more often, we're all old classmates. I chuckled lightly just busy with work. If it hadn't been for Hazel urging me all this time, I naturally wouldn't have come. I never liked these kinds of gatherings. Since Lucas entered the private room, he had been chatting with the class leader. His gaze occasionally fell on me, making me feel a bit uncomfortable. After sitting for about 10 minutes, I picked up my handbag and went to the restroom. While touching up my makeup, my phone rang with a message alert. Julian, Maeve, are you at a gathering near your company? Me, how did you know? I sent Julian a puzzled little emoji. He quickly replied. I installed a GPS system on your phone. I smirked. This man, he really wants to control my every move. When I returned to the private room, they had started playing truth or dare. I sat next to Hazel, watching them having fun. Unexpectedly, the next moment, the mouth of a bottle on the table suddenly pointed at me. Someone in the crowd asked. Truth or dare? I pursed my lips and chose dare. A few active classmates immediately got excited. Okay, you stand face to face with Lucas, your hand around his neck. Say some cheesy lines to him and affectionately kiss his cheek. 
As soon as the words fell, a burst of cheering erupted. Everyone was eagerly watching me and Lucas. Especially a few people who usually got along well with Lucas, the meaning in their eyes was even more obvious. I furrowed my brows and immediately refused. Let's change it, I really can't do this one. Lucas' smile instantly froze at the corner of his mouth. Even in a game, you resist me like this? I didn't say anything, and everyone started trying to persuade me all at once. No way, Maeve, can't you handle this kind of playfulness? Hey, didn't you used to be with Lucas before? Yeah, I remember you and Lucas had a good relationship back then. Did you guys break up? It's just a kiss on the cheek, there's no need to be such a killjoy, right? Among these mocking voices, some were from the girls in the class. Hazel was indignant on my behalf. Aren't you guys going a bit too far with these comments? What if Maeve is married now? Isn't this kind of teasing ruining someone's family? One of the girls rolled her eyes and said. You said a what if, but what if she's not married? Hazel was so angry her face turned red and her neck thickened. I comfortingly patted her hand, then looked at everyone and said. I am married. My husband is quite sensitive, and he wouldn't be happy about this. Chapter 12 As I spoke, all eyes in the private room were focused on me. Lucas's face turned red and then pale. Embarrassed, he stood up and suddenly pulled me up. Then, he leaned in close to my ear and whispered. Maeve, do you really want to embarrass me in front of all these people? I was stunned. Next, Lucas grabbed my hands and placed them around his neck. I struggled, but he held my hands even tighter. Just as I was getting angry and embarrassed, the door of the private room suddenly opened. Julian stood at the doorway with a stern expression, staring directly at me and Lucas. Who are you? Someone in the crowd looked at Julian with disapproval. The next moment, Julian gave him a cold glance. That look was full of pressure. The previously lively private room instantly fell silent. Julian walked over, pulled me into his arms, and caressed my slightly blushing wrist tenderly. Does it hurt? I shook my head and smiled at Julian. He adjusted a few loose strands of hair on my forehead. I have a bit of a bad temper, my biggest flaw is being overprotective of my wife. Maeve is now a married woman, so please be more mindful in social situations from now on. If any of you dare offend my wife again, I will make you regret it. Julian spoke, but his gaze was fixed on Lucas. The eyes of the two men met in the air. Under Julian's intense pressure, Lucas awkwardly looked away. With that, Julian held my hand and left the private room directly. Sitting in the passenger seat, I nervously gripped the seatbelt. Although Julian's face showed no expression, the car was speeding fast. I wanted to say something, but ultimately his dark expression made me retreat. Late at night, Julian held me tightly in his arms. He tucked the blanket around me, making sure I wouldn't catch a cold. I sniffed, then said. Julian, I want to talk to you about tonight. It's okay, go to sleep. His words cut in softly. Julian kissed my forehead and his voice remained steady. I wanted to say something else, but I could already hear his even breathing above me. Well, I'll talk about it tomorrow. Chapter 13 I had a long dream where a man kept chasing me. When I woke up startled, I subconsciously reached out beside me. But the moment I touched the cold sheets, I jolted awake. Julian wasn't there beside me. My heart skipped a beat. Slipping on my slippers, I hurriedly opened the bedroom door. I found Julian sitting alone in the media room. It was dark inside, even the movie playing was muted. I fumbled to turn on the light and saw a disheveled and pitiful Julian. He was sitting obediently on the carpet. It seemed like he'd been in that position for a while. When he looked at me, his eyes were bloodshot. My heart clenched sharply, and I walked over quickly. Can't sleep? Julian looked up at me, his voice slightly hoarse. No. Why didn't you turn the sound on? I didn't want to disturb you. I lowered my gaze and held Julian's hand. Normally, Julian's big hands were warm and dry. But tonight, 
his hand was unusually cold. I tenderly took a blanket from the couch and covered him with it. Next time you can't sleep, make sure to wake me up. Can I keep you company? Julian nodded obediently. Yes. Maeve, I'll do anything you say. He pulled me into his arms. But his shoulders were trembling ever so slightly. Julian, do you have something you want to say to me? I leaned on his shoulder, patiently coaxing him. I've known for a long time that Julian has a serious paranoia. Once he brings someone into his territory, he won't easily let go. After a long while, Julian's trembling voice sounded. Maeve, I'm sorry. Even though I know there's nothing between you and Lucas, I still can't control my restlessness. Even just seeing you both standing together, I find it unbearable. Before I had you, I used to think that as long as you were willing to be with me, I would do anything. But after you married me, I became greedy for your heart. I wanted your mind and body to belong to me completely. I know I'm being selfish, but I truly can't control my love for you. Every day, I want more than before, I want you to not speak to any man in this world. I'm really afraid, afraid that this obsessive love will scare you. As Julian finished speaking, he choked up. His tears fell on my shoulder, paining my heart. Julian has always been a sensitive child. He lives in a dark world. He's afraid of losing me, afraid of scaring me. Even though he's so unhappy tonight, he didn't have the heart to blame me. This Julian truly makes my heart ache. Chapter 14 I gently pulled away from his embrace and wiped Julian's tears away. He looked at me cautiously, like a child who had done something wrong. Maeve, please don't leave me? In my memory, Julian has never cried, even when his father slapped him. This man, however, was so fragile that he cried in front of me. I looked at him and without hesitation, kissed his lips. Julian hesitated for a moment, then opened his lips to deepen the kiss. After the kiss, I tidied up Julian's messy hair. Julian, you can tell me anything, you know. Whatever it is, whether you're happy or sad, I hope you can share it with me. Since the day I came to you, I knew I was destined to be with you for the rest of my life. This kind of feeling, I won't give to anyone else again. So, you can ask me over and over again. I will patiently respond to you, I love you very much. As I finished speaking, Julian's tears fell even more fiercely. He pulled me into his arms. Maeve, don't lie to me. If you lie to me, I will truly go crazy. In the end, who kissed whom first, it's already unclear. Julian eagerly tore at my lips. As if only by possessing me so intensely could he prove that I love him. An hour later, Julian carried me to the bathroom to bathe. I was already extremely tired. Yet he enthusiastically kissed my lips. Maeve, do you love me? At the same time, even though I was incredibly tired, I still managed to respond. Julian, I love you so much. Satisfied with the answer, Julian held me and returned to the room. Contentedly, he continued to hug me and fell asleep. Chapter 15 Time passed quickly, and before I knew it, Julian and I had been married for almost half a year. Recently, I often felt nauseous. When our relatives were late to visit, Julian took me for a checkup. When the results came back, there was a kind middle-aged female doctor sitting in front of us. Congratulations, you're pregnant. For weeks pregnant, the baby is growing very healthily. Julian and I exchanged a glance. I could see the deep joy in his eyes. Being a father for the first time, Julian was meticulous. He patiently asked the doctor about the taboos for pregnant women. To better take care of me, Julian hired a nanny. Most of the time, he worked from home. Even for my nutrition, Julian took care of it personally. During the two months when my morning sickness was severe, Julian grew thinner than me. If we must say, Julian was almost a perfect husband. Seeing me struggle with the pregnancy, he hugged me tenderly. Just this one, let's not have any more in the future. I chuckled and patted his head. Honey, do you want a boy or a girl? At that moment, he gently embraced me. Either a boy or a girl is fine. 
As long as it's yours, I'll love it. I smiled and didn't reveal the truth. The last time we went to buy a baby cot, Julian brought back a bunch of little girl dresses. I wanted to return them, but Julian refused. We still don't know the baby's gender, what if they can't wear them later? It's okay, let's just keep it as a memento. A few months later, the child belonging to Julian and me finally arrived. It was a girl. The moment she came out of the delivery room, Julian's eyes welled up with tears. He kissed my sweaty forehead. Maeve, you've worked hard. He said our daughter would definitely look more like me. Many, many years later, I leaned against Julian's chest. Why did you like me in high school? Because you were beautiful. I chuckled and gently patted Julian's shoulder. Be serious. Julian kissed my forehead. When I was eight, my mom passed away. She lost her mind and died in a car accident after finding out about my dad's affair. At that time, I resented my dad, even felt that life was meaningless. I was a mess, getting into fights, not studying. Until later, you appeared in my life, and for the first time, I felt the urge to protect a girl. Everyone was afraid of me, but you chose to get close to me despite everything. Listening to Julian reminisce about the past, I let out a soft sigh. If your mom knew that you are married now and have your own child. If she could know from beyond, she would be very happy. Julian looked up at the stars. Yes, she would be very happy. For a long time afterward, Julian just held me quietly. After a while, he suddenly called out to me. Maeve, thank you for choosing me back then. I shifted in his embrace, lifted my head, and looked at him. Julian, I should be the one thanking you. Thank you for loving me all this time. From the unexpected encounter at the beginning to now, where everything has settled. Julian confidently took every step towards me. This world is brilliant and grand. Julian stood in the light, reaching out to me. With a smile, he said to me. Maeve, welcome to my world.